During a visit to an antique store, Rachel found a peculiar piece of gold. It turned out that the man who brought it to the shop mentioned it had once belonged to a pirate named Captain Benedict Jameson. He said he had hidden the rest of his treasures on an island. The map was hidden inside a cave that was located on a beach on the same island, but no one has managed to find the treasure yet. Rachel was intrigued, so she called her friend Jeremy and convinced him to set sail there to search for this treasure. After weeks of sailing, they arrived at the island and looked for the cave first. Can you spot it? Here it is. Three different paths within the cave led to the map. Which one should they choose? Notice the blinking eyes of a wild animal waiting for its prey in the shadows of the second path? There is a rather large spider web blocking the third path. That must only mean there's a large spider that made it. So, the safest option is the first path. They arrived at the end of the cave and found three wooden boxes. Each had a different map on it. Only one map will lead them to the treasure. Which map should they choose? The area that the first map shows is surrounded by trees. The second map shows an area surrounded by the ocean. The area on the third map is surrounded by mountains. So, since they're on an island, they should choose the second map. On the back of the treasure map, they found a message written by Captain Benedict himself. Congratulations, traveler. You've picked the correct map. Now you're a step closer to finding the rest of my wealth. But I warn you, the journey ahead won't be simple. You'll have to solve every riddle that I have for you. And only then will you be able to find my treasure. According to the map, they had to enter the forest. Captain Benedict left another riddle on the map about it. My friend will accompany you from here on. But first, you have to find the tree that it lives on. Look for a fruitful palm tree. If you try to bite the fruit I'm talking about, you'll break your teeth. I guarantee Take a look around. Which tree do you think that the captain is talking about? Some of these trees don't have any fruit at all. So, none of them can be the tree the captain mentioned. These trees have bananas on them, but you won't break your teeth if you eat bananas. Then it must be this tree with coconuts because you'll definitely break your teeth if you try to bite a coconut. When they got closer to the tree, they noticed an engraving on it. It said, Look up and find my friend Jonathan the monkey. Take him with you on your journey, because he knows where I hid the key. Then Rachel and Jeremy looked up and saw three monkeys. Which monkey do you think Jonathan is? Notice that the third monkey is holding the same piece of gold as the one Rachel found at the antique store? This guy must have access to the treasure, so he must be Jonathan. Rachel and Jeremy tried taking Jonathan with them, but he refused to even move. How do you think they can convince Jonathan to come with them? Luckily, there's banana trees around, so they should just give him a banana to gain his trust. Jeremy wanted to climb one of the banana trees to pick a banana, but they were all very tall, and it seemed impossible to climb any of them. However, Rachel suddenly burst with excitement after seeing something that would help Jeremy. What did Rachel see? Yeah. 
take a closer look at the trees. One of them has an old rope ladder attached to it. Jeremy can climb up there to get a banana. After Jeremy had picked a banana, Jonathan the monkey got down from the tree to get it. While he was eating his banana, Rachel and Jeremy felt hungry and decided to take a break to eat something too. However, when they reached for the food in their bags, everything was gone. Can you guess what happened? Did you notice something strange as Jeremy was climbing the tree? Let's rewind a bit to show you what happened. The monkeys were stealing all the food from Jeremy and Rachel's bags. Rachel and Jeremy had nothing else to eat other than the bananas off of the trees. But when Jeremy tried to climb up the rope ladder again, the rope broke. Now that they wouldn't be able to pick any bananas, they had to find something else to eat. They walked around and came across a waterfall. Rachel suggested that they catch some fish. Jeremy then caught three different fish, but only one of them was safe to eat. Can you tell which one? They should eat the first fish because the second fish has spikes on it, so it's not suitable to eat. The third fish isn't real. It's electronic. It has small cameras instead of eyes. They fell asleep after eating, trying to figure out where the electronic fish came from. The next morning, when Jeremy woke up, he realized that Rachel was gone. Then, they heard a man's voice. Jeremy couldn't figure out where it was coming from, but Jonathan the monkey pointed to the electronic fish. The voice said, I have your friend. Answer this riddle of mine if you want to see your friend again. There's a one-story house in which everything is green. Green walls, green doors, green furniture. What color are the stairs? Since it's only a one-story house, there aren't any stairs in it. Suddenly, the waterfall stopped flowing and the cave appeared behind it. The voice said, Enter! Inside, an evil scientist was waiting for Jeremy. He said that he was going to give him a chance to save his friend. He took Jeremy to a water tank with three different creatures in it. The scientist said, One of these creatures is Rachel, but the other two are not human at all. I will free your friend if you can guess correctly which one she is. Take a closer look at the second creature. There are definitely human legs covered with seaweed. That must be Rachel. The evil scientist set Rachel free, but didn't let them leave the cave just yet. He showed them three gates. If they choose the right one, they'll be free to go. Behind the first gate, hundreds of poisonous snakes are waiting. Behind the second gate, there is a vicious vampire. Behind the third gate, there is a pack of hungry wolves. Which door should they choose? They should choose the second door. It's morning outside. The sun is shining bright and vampires can't survive the sun. After Rachel, Jeremy, and Jonathan got free, they got back on the trail following the map and arrived at the side of a cliff. There were three different bridges in front of them from which they could walk across to the other side. Which bridge should they choose? The wooden bridge looks very old. It won't be able to hold their weight. Even though the metal bridge looks sturdy, it's very narrow and it has no railings. They might lose their balance and fall. So, they should choose the glass bridge. As they continued their journey, they walked into a swamp without noticing and they got stuck in it. There were three ropes hanging from a tree with which they could pull themselves out. Which rope should they choose? Yeah. 
the first and the third rope are no ropes at all. One of them is a snake, and the other is a tiger's tail, so they should choose the second rope. After they saved themselves from the swamp, they were finally able to make it to the last destination that was marked on the map. There was a trap door in the ground. They had to go through it, but it was locked with a five-letter combination padlock. However, Captain Benedict left a clue on how to unlock it in his notes, and the clue was 3, 8, 5, 19, 20. What do you think it means? Each number represents its respective letter in the alphabet. The third letter of the alphabet is C. The eighth letter is H. The fifth letter is E. The nineteenth letter is S. And the twentieth letter is T. So the passcode is the word CHEST. John's father has three sons. There's Jack, a quiet, intelligent student. Then there's Jason, a popular athlete. So who's the third son? It's John! His father has three sons, Jack, Jason, and him, John! One day, a teacher decided to give her students a test, but all of them refused to take it. She could give detention for skipping the test to only one student. All of them knew each other's names. If a student knew they were going to get a detention, they agreed to take the test. How could the teacher make all the students participate? She told them that she'd give detention to the student whose name came first alphabetically. Then this person wouldn't skip the test, the next person on the list wouldn't skip as well, and so on until the end of the list. Randy was at home, sitting in his chair with a book. Suddenly, his sister's super expensive vase fell and broke in the living room. He ran there in time to see a stranger jump out of the window and run away. Randy tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold, so he couldn't see the person. When the police arrived, they immediately knew he was lying. He'd broken the vase himself. How did they know? Glasses don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Michael Winston, who dislikes modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet, the manager of the gallery thanked Mr. Winston for his actions. How come? Michael was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more exhibits. Look at this line of people at the checkout in a supermarket. They're all a colorful bunch, but one of them is trying to sneak out food out of the store. Can you tell who just by looking at them closely? You might have thought it was the pregnant woman because of the fake tummy, but look! She's wearing comfy sneakers without shoelaces so that she could slip them on easily. The guy in a baggy hoodie sure looks suspicious, but it's not food he's hiding inside his pockets. It's a kitten! And the real culprit is the guy behind him. Look at his sleeves. One of his arms looks way bigger than the other. He must be hiding something in there. A man dressed in black from head to toe was walking in the middle of the road. All of a sudden, a huge black car with its headlights off came around the corner and screeched to a halt, not to hit him. How on earth did the driver of the car see the man in black? Well, the only reasonable answer would be that it was in broad daylight. Nobody said it was nighttime after all. Three college friends met after a summer break and were sharing stories about their vacation. 
Lily described how she and her boyfriend had gone to Paris and seen the city from the top of the Eiffel Tower. Dylan told his friends that he had traveled to Africa with his parents. But on their last day, there was a massive volcanic eruption and it didn't spoil their vacation only because they flew home that day. And Ellie said that she had visited her uncle in Texas and learned how to ride a horse. One of the stories was fake though. Which one? Dylan's story is fake. He couldn't fly home on the day of the eruption because when something like this happens, all flights get canceled. Mark and Amy got stranded on a tiny uninhabited island full of sand and rocks, but not much else. They had no radio or cell phones, and there were no trees on the island to make a smoke signal. Suddenly, Amy noticed a plane circling the sky in search of them. She got a bright idea to make it notice them. Soon after, the plane picked them up. What was Amy's idea? She suggested using rocks to spell out SOS on the sand. Mike was studying for a big test in the school library. It was already late when he finished up and suddenly heard someone shouting for help. The voice was coming from behind a locked classroom door. Mike rushed there and opened it. Inside, there was his classmate, Brad. He told Mike that he'd gone to grab a bite in the cafeteria, only to find it was closed that day. Suddenly, he blacked out. And the next thing he knew, he was locked in the classroom. Mike promised to find out who had done this. By morning, Mike had four suspects in mind. When school started, he interrogated them. Matthew told him he'd been doing his homework in a classroom. Emily said that she'd been with Matthew, but later she'd gone home. Olivia claimed that she'd been having lunch in the cafeteria, and Chris explained that he'd been sick that day. It took Mike no time to figure out who was guilty. It was Olivia. She couldn't have been eating lunch in the cafeteria because it was closed that day. Clara was in her hotel room when she heard someone knock on the door. She looked through the peephole and saw an unfamiliar man. He said, Hi, I'm the hotel manager. Sorry to bother you, but our database has crashed. Could you let me in to confirm some information? Clara immediately rushed to her phone and called hotel security. Can you figure out why? The badge on the man's chest says Chloe Smith, and that's a female name. She knew the man was a fake manager. A young woman went to another town to look for a better job. She promised her mother she would come and visit her often. But four months passed, and she still didn't come home. Her mother missed her very much. One day, in the middle of winter, the woman shouted, April is here! How is it possible? April was her daughter's name. She finally came to visit her family. It's usually under you. Take away its first letter and it'll be above you. Take away its first two letters and you won't see it. What is it? It's a chair which can transform into hair and air. Look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong with it. Why would this young lady put a pair of boots on the table and a saw in the fridge? How about this image? Does anything strike you as odd? There's a snowman in the oven and a fish in the toaster. Dennis, Maria, and Julie were at a party. They decided to play a game. There were five hats, two red ones, and three yellow ones. The friends closed their eyes, took random hats, and put them on their heads. Then they opened their eyes and looked at one another. Each of them had to guess what color the hat on their head was. 
Dennis and Julie said they didn't know, but Maria exclaimed that she knew the color of her hat. What color was it? It was yellow. Maria saw that Dennis and Julie were wearing red hats, and she knew there were only two of those. You can't share it until you take it. What is it? It's a photo. You see a combination of letters O-T-T-F-F-S-S. What should be the next three letters in the line? They should be E and T. These are the first letters of the names of the numbers from 1 to 10. Michael was walking along the street when a sealed envelope landed near his feet. The guy picked it up. Inside, there was a key and a note. It said, Help! 323. Michael entered the building. Soon, he found a door number 323 and used the key to open it. He saw a man near the open window. He was gagged and tied to a chair. Once free, the man exclaimed, Two men broke into my office, tied me up, and took all the money from my safe. Luckily, my hands were free. I managed to write this note and throw it together with the key out the window. Michael didn't believe the man and called the police. Why? The envelope was sealed. How could the man do it if he was gagged? It can never be thrown, but it can be caught. People are always looking for ways to lose it. What is it? It's a cold. Two teams were playing soccer against each other. Each of the teams scored two goals in total. And still, it wasn't a tie. One team won, and the other lost. How come? One of the teams scored an own goal. Young but very popular blogger Eric wrote his first book. It was a huge success. The guy was preparing for his first book signing. He was very excited and nervous. So he took a break to steady his nerves in a quiet corner. But even at 6 p.m., when the meeting was supposed to start, Eric was nowhere to be seen. In 10 minutes, a security guard found him lying on the floor in the bathroom. Someone had hit the writer on the head. The police had three suspects. Angela, his agent, said she had been solving some urgent organizational issues. Frank, one of the fans, said he had been a great lover of Eric's books for years. He wouldn't do anything to harm the writer. And Patrick, the security guard, said he had been doing his job, keeping the fans away from the entrance. Who hit Eric? It was Frank. It was Eric's first book. Frank couldn't possibly be reading his books for years. Look at these guys carefully. Who is a fake fireman? It's the guy on the right. He's not wearing a helmet and doesn't have a special bag. Plus, his pants aren't part of the uniform. You have three empty cups and ten sugar cubes. You need to distribute these sugar cubes between the cups so that each of them contains an odd number of cubes. Put three sugar cubes in the first cup and three cubes in the second one. After that, put the remaining four cubes and the second cup in cup number three. Now the first cup has three sugar cubes and the second one has three sugar cubes too. As for the third cup, it has seven sugar cubes, four of its own and three in the second cup. Two roommates, Deborah and Rachel, were walking home after doing their weekly grocery shopping. Deborah kept complaining about how heavy her bags were. Then Rachel told her, I don't understand why you're upset. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice more bags than you do. And if I gave you one of mine, we would have the same number of bags. How many bags were the girls carrying?
Rachel had seven bags, while Deborah was only carrying five bags. Detective Black's assistant, Josh, was late for work. When he arrived, he told his boss the following story. I was driving along the highway when I saw an unconscious man lying on the left side of the road. I picked him up and took him to the nearest hospital. Finally, he came to his senses. He told me he had been pushed out of the moving vehicle. The bag and all of his money and documents were left inside. But Detective Black said the man was lying. How did he figure it out? If the man had indeed been pushed out of the car, he would have been lying on the right side of the road, not the left one. Kenneth was starving. He found a nice diner that served burgers and bought one. After a waiter brought him his order, Kenneth went to the bathroom to wash his hands. But when he came back, his burger was gone. The guy looked around the diner and understood who had taken his lunch. Can you figure it out? It's the young woman with a dog sitting at her feet and sniffing the air. If she was just drinking coffee, which is what she's pretending to do, the dog wouldn't be so interested in her. Mary was walking through the park when she spotted a hungry dog. The woman decided to share her snack with the animal. Unfortunately, there was a stream between her and the pooch. She squatted down to attract the dog's attention and showed it the food. The animal was next to her in no time. There was no bridge over the stream, and still, the dog wasn't wet. How is it possible? It happened in the winter, and the stream was frozen. A rich entrepreneur disappeared from his office. The only thing he left behind was a note with the numbers 6, 4, 9, 10, and 11, and a calendar. The police have five suspects, James, Kevin, Carol, Jason, and Laura. Who knows something about the man's disappearance? It's Jason. The numbers mean months of the year, and the first numbers of these months make up the culprit's name, J-A-S-O-N. Matthew bought a new smartphone and a phone case. He paid $310. The gadget cost $300 more than the case. How much did Matthew pay for the phone? He paid $305. Tony was hosting a party. Three hours after it started, several guests came up to the guy. They asked where they could charge their phones. Unfortunately, there was only one socket in Tony's house. The guy checked all the power strips he had. Help him figure out how many phones he can charge at a time. Tony can charge 8 phones. Look, one strip has its cord cut. The strip with one socket is literally useless. One of the strips doesn't have a cord whatsoever. Another has no hole for a plug. Plus, one socket on each of the two strips will be taken by the plugs from the others. A rich businessman called the police. When he arrived at his office in the morning, he remembered he had left a bunch of important documents in his safe at home. He sent his secretary, John, to bring them. But the guy called half an hour later. He said the safe was open. The documents were still inside, but all the money had disappeared. The police examined the businessman's home office. They tried to find some fingerprints. Nothing at all. The detective had three suspects. The secretary, the businessman's nephew, Mark, and the housekeeper. The secretary said he had called his boss as soon as he had seen the safe. Mark said, I opened the door for John. Then I went to my room and found out about the accident only after John called me. The housekeeper told the police she had been very busy with her chores and hadn't been to the office since the previous evening. Who took the money? It was the secretary. There were no fingerprints in the room, but John was there and definitely touched different things. If he hadn't been guilty, he wouldn't have wiped his fingerprints off. Annika received a letter where someone asked her out. 
The letter was sweet, but it wasn't signed, so she didn't know who it、uh -oh. was. She was guessing three guys. All of them were her college friends. Who do you think asked Annika out? Look at this sign at the end of the letter. This guy has the exact same tattoo, so I bet that the letter is from him. An office was robbed, and police arrived for an investigation. The money was stolen from a drawer, but there was no trace of breaking in. The lock was fine, and the windows were all locked. Look around and try to guess how the robber broke in. Look at the ventilation gate. It's slightly open. The robber must have used this way to get into the office and get out. A police officer was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the robber entered the hospital and disappeared. When the police officer entered the building, there were three workers. One of them must be the robber who dressed up to pretend to be a doctor. Can you tell who? It's the man in the middle. Look at his badge. There's a picture of a woman on it. He must have put on the first pair of clothes he noticed. At daylight, someone painted a wall of a museum, and the police were looking for the person who did it just an hour after it happened. They were roaming the streets of their little town, and they found three suspects. Adam said that he'd been at work and just returned. Carter said that he'd been busy painting his fence. Blake said that she'd been walking her dog and didn't know anything about what had happened. Who is guilty? It's Carter. He has paint on his hands, and it indeed goes in line with his alibi that he was painting the fence. But his fence is red, and the paint on his hands is blue, just like the painting on the museum's wall. Mrs. Roberts, a math teacher, returned to the classroom after visiting a principal's office and took a sip of her coffee. She had to spit it out immediately because instead of coffee, there was blue ink inside. Can you tell which student pranked her? It's this one. Look at his hand. It has ink stains on it. Mrs. Taylor works in a selection committee of a big organization specialized in sustainable and green development. There is an open position for a researcher, and she's looking through the applicants. Many of them are fake, either sent by underqualified people or generated by robots. Her task is to filter out real applicants, and she needs your help. Let's start with this one. What do you think? Is it a real application? No, it doesn't seem so. This girl was born in 2003, so she's 19 years old. She's way too young to have a PhD. She must be lying. Okay, here's another one. What do you say? This seems to be another fake. Look at his birthday. There was no February 29th in 1991. This application must have been generated by a robot. Okay, then here's the next candidate for you. What's your call? This young lady seems fine. I'd recommend considering her. Here's another candidate. What do you say? He seems fine to me too. Next one, this candidate. Do you see something suspicious, or is it all okay? Of course not. Look at the photo. It's some random photo of a cat. People don't use such pictures in their CVs. It must be a computer-generated fake. Okay, one last candidate to consider. In or out? What do you think?
It says that this person is from Narnia. Narnia is a fictional place. It doesn't exist in real life. So this CV must be fake too. A woman called the police and reported that she was robbed. She said that she was in a restaurant bathroom, fixing her makeup when someone attacked her from behind. She couldn't see the person and didn't know what they looked like. The police didn't believe her. Why? The woman was fixing her makeup, so she was looking in the mirror. If someone tried to approach her from the back, she would definitely see the person. So she lied and made up the whole story. Mrs. Cook went on vacation with her three daughters, Kaya, Ruby, and Emma. They were on the beach, and Mrs. Cook had to leave to solve some business issues. The girls stayed, but their mother banned them from going into the water without her supervision. So, they were supposed to read or build sandcastles. When Mrs. Cook returned, she knew that one of her daughters didn't listen to her. Which one? It's Kaya. Look, her hair is wet. This wouldn't happen if she didn't go into the water. There was a robbery in a neighborhood. Someone stole the seeds of rare and beautiful flowers from Mrs. Patterson, which she brought from abroad. The police interrogated several neighbors. Mr. Clark said, I don't work in my garden at all. Mrs. Moore said, Mrs. Patterson showed me these seeds and gave me a couple of them, but I'd never steal anything. Mr. Campbell said, I'd mind my own business. Who stole the seeds? It was Mr. Clark. He said that he didn't take care of his garden, but his garden looks way too nice to be abandoned. In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Rellum came back home after a long and fun day at a club and asked her daughters what they'd been doing. Hannah said that she'd been watching TV all day. Elle said that she'd spent a day in the water park. Ava said that she and her friends had had a candy-eating marathon. Still, Mrs. Rellum could tell that one of her daughters lied and had actually spent all day studying. Who was it? It was Hannah. Look, the TV is unplugged, but there's a book with her in bed. She's definitely been reading it. On the weekend, Kira and her friends were supposed to celebrate a birthday of a friend online, but Kira didn't feel like it and didn't show up. On Monday, in school, she explained that something had happened and she hadn't had electricity or internet all day. So she'd spent the day in front of the computer writing her midterm paper. Her friends didn't believe her. Why? If there was no electricity, she wouldn't be able to work on her computer because it doesn't work without electricity. I'll keep checking how attentive you are, and here are some more tasks for you. Now I'll show you two apartments and you have to figure out which one of them was robbed. Ready to start? Here's the first pair. What do you say? This apartment has a broken window, so obviously it's this one. Okay, great. Now the next one. Two apartments of two different people. Which one was robbed? This one is way too trash to be a regular mess. I bet it was robbed. Another pair of apartments. Can you see which one someone had broken in? There are dirt stains on the floor. Someone was up here in boots. So I think that's the apartment that was robbed. Okay, we'll keep looking at apartments. But now your task is to say who do you think lives there? What profession does the person have? Let's start out easy. What about this apartment? Pair 
paintings, brushes, it definitely belongs to an artist. What about this one? Do you have any ideas? Punching bag, boxing gloves, dumbbells, and some other sports equipment. I'd say there's a boxer living there. Take a closer look here. What are your thoughts? A huge desk, many monitors and keyboards, a microphone, a headset, posters of some video games. I bet it's a room of a gamer or a streamer. What about this nice and clean room? Do you see something that could give away the profession of the person who lives there? There's a ballet bar and there are also some tutus in the wardrobe. It's the room of a ballerina. And some more tasks for you. I'll show you some photos and you'll have to find what's wrong or odd about them. Here's the first one. What do you say? There are people on the surface of the moon, but they're not wearing any spacesuits. Another space-related picture. Do you see a mistake? Look closer. It's not the moon, it's Saturn. What about this photo? Do you see something odd here? Look at the way this guy is eating a banana. Jill is an art teacher. One morning, she entered her art studio and got very surprised. The entire wall and the students' drawings were stained with paint. Jill interviewed three suspects. The cleaning lady hadn't cleaned the class the day before because she'd had a day off. Jill's student Rosie said that she had left the studio at 6 p.m. At that time, everything was okay. Another student, Rick, confessed that he had brought his girlfriend to the studio to show off his paintings, but they left at 8 p.m. Who is responsible for this mess? The cat! It got into the studio through an open window. Take a look at this picture. Why did he tie his friend down? It's a full moon. His friend began turning into a werewolf and the guy got scared. Two guys are trying to get Hillary's attention by showing off their money. The first man sends her a selfie of him near a private jet and the second sends a photo of him wearing a pilot's uniform and flying a jumbo jet. Whose salary is higher? Pilots earn good money. So the second guy is definitely well off, and the first guy probably just works at the airport. Four artists gathered in a park to paint landscapes. Having finished his first drawing, Bill went to the bathroom. When Bill returned, he found out that his drawing was ruined. He was very upset and questioned his friends. Stephen didn't see what happened. He was away buying coffee for everyone. Dylan didn't look at the paintings. He was distracted by a conversation with a beautiful woman. Kelly said that she'd been painting her own portrait in another part of the park. Who's lying? Kelly, if she had been painting, why is her canvas blank? Stephen had a rough day at college, so he decided to relax and went to his favorite restaurant with other students. Sam, Jill, and Jules each ordered a cappuccino. Rebecca, Peter, and Helen each ordered an espresso. What drink did Stephen order? Cappuccino or espresso? Espresso. Stephen has two letter E's in his name, just like Rebecca, Peter, and Helen. Can you spot anything weird in this picture? This coconut doesn't look as fresh as the others. 
Henry was walking along the street. Suddenly, a witch appeared in front of her. She opened a portal, grabbed Henry, and took him to her castle. Henry asked her to let him go, but the witch said, Now you will serve me forever. Henry had a notebook and a pen in his pocket. He offered the witch a deal. If I write your weight in this notebook, will you let me go? The witch was very intrigued and agreed. Henry wrote something down, and she had to let him go. What did he write? As promised, Henry wrote, your weight. Can you guess the food by these emojis? It's sushi. How about this one? Hot chocolate. Let's take it up a notch. Can you guess the dish by these emojis? It's pizza. How about this? It's a cheeseburger. Can you guess the food by these emojis? It's fruit ice. How about this combination? Any ideas? That's right, it's french fries. The next product. You probably like it hot. A peanut butter cookie. How about this combination? That's right, it's a salad. Jack bought his girlfriend an expensive dress for her birthday. He left the dress in his wardrobe and left the house. When he returned, he saw that the dress was gone. Only three people were at home that day, and he questioned them. Jack's sister, Laura, said that she'd been cleaning the house since morning. Jack's mother, Rose, had been planting flowers in the garden. And Jack's aunt, Nina, had been cooking a birthday dinner all day long. Who stole the dress? It was Jack's mother. There are no flowers in the garden. Take a look at this picture. Can you find the odd emoji? This guy over here. One day, Mr. Blue, Mr. Red, and Mr. White met for dinner. When they took off their jackets, Mr. Blue drew everyone's attention to the fact that each of them was wearing a shirt whose color was different from their last name. The man in the white shirt looked surprised and said, Yeah, Mr. Blue, you're right. Can you figure out what color each man was wearing? Mr. Blue can be wearing only a white or red shirt, but we know for sure that a different man is wearing a white shirt. This means that Mr. Blue must be wearing a red shirt. Mr. White could be wearing a blue or a red shirt. But the red shirt is already taken by Mr. Blue. Therefore, Mr. White is wearing a blue shirt. That means Mr. Red is wearing a white shirt. How about this picture? Do you see any odd emojis here? This one over there. Jessica was a famous art dealer. Many painters were dreaming of working with her. One day, she entered an art class and noticed a stunning landscape. Wow, who painted this masterpiece? She asked. Three artists came up to her. Each claimed he was the author of the painting. Can you help Jessica identify the real author? It's the guy over here. His palette contains exactly the colors that we see in the painting. Take a look at this picture. Can you spot what's wrong here? Dolphins don't swim in forest lakes. 
Once, a strict king ruled his kingdom. The magical town where he lived was surrounded by high walls. No one was allowed to leave the town, and anyone who wanted to enter the town had to have special documents. If they didn't, they were sent away. The Magic Kingdom was connected with the rest of the world with a wooden bridge. It was under the watch of the king's wizard, who drove away all uninvited guests with his magic. He would walk out to check the bridge every five minutes, and he would then stay inside for another five minutes. To cross the bridge, a person needed nine minutes, and still, one citizen managed to escape the town. How did he do it? The man was walking across the bridge for about five minutes while the wizard was inside. After that, he turned back and started walking toward the town. When he reached the wall, the wizard asked for his documents. The man didn't have any, so he was sent away. Maggie is an art critic. One day, she decided to visit a fancy restaurant famous for its unique art collection. Maggie took a seat and began to study the paintings hanging on the walls. When the waitress approached her table, Maggie asked how old those paintings were. The waitress said that they only had 18th century art pieces in the restaurant. Maggie left that place immediately and wrote an angry review on their website. Liars! Why? Look at this portrait. Do you recognize this face? It's the waitress. It's very unlikely that she's more than 300 years old, unless she's a vampire. The guys continued their journey. Soon after, they decided to stop and have a quick snack. Kevin's second brother, Andy, spotted a cave. As soon as he entered the cave, the way out disappeared. Now he must choose between three doors. There are poisonous scorpions behind the first door. There's a sleeping potion behind the second door, and he would have to drink. Finally, there's a hungry tiger behind the third door. What should Andy do to escape? He should grab the sleeping potion, pour it over his sandwich, and throw the food at the hungry tiger. When the tiger falls asleep, he'll be able to escape through the third door. Jill, Kevin, Andy, and Mike headed home when they noticed cougars moving toward them. The guy started running away and saw a tunnel. It was very dark and scary. They only have 12 minutes to cross it. It takes Mike one minute to cross the tunnel, Andy two minutes, Jill four minutes, and Kevin five minutes. The guys decided to split into two pairs, but they only have one flashlight, and there's no way they go in there in four. How can they escape? Andy and Mike should walk through the tunnel with the flashlight in two minutes. Then Mike returns. They still have nine minutes. Kevin and Jill run through the tunnel with the flashlight and give it to Andy. It will take another five minutes. Then Andy should run to Mike and they will escape together with the remaining two minutes. Kevin and Jill returned home, but the adventure continued. Someone robbed their apartment yesterday. They called the police and questioned the neighbors. Dan said that he had spent all holidays at work and didn't come home at all. Vicky was wearing headphones because she was making music, so she couldn't hear any suspicious sounds. And Emily spent the holidays at her sister's place because construction workers had to finish renovations in her apartment. Who is lying? Emily. If they finished renovations, why is her apartment a giant mess? Two years later, Kevin and Jill decided to get married. On the wedding day, Kevin noticed that Jill had forgotten her wedding necklace in his bag. He went to her dressing room to get the jewelry. But when he got there, he saw three identical Jills wearing identical dresses. Jill's father is a scientist. He decided to test Kevin's feelings before the wedding and made two clones of his daughter. <laughs> Help Kevin find his real bride. It's the third one. She has a tattoo on her ankle, remember? And her clones don't. 
because tattoos don't impact genetics. Jill went downstairs to say hi to her bridesmaids. But when she saw them, Jill began to yell at her dad because he pranked her with his mad scientific tricks once again. One of the bridesmaids was a cyborg. Can you guess who it was? This elegant lady over here. What is she doing with her head? Kevin's mother was responsible for the wedding banquet. But when she entered the kitchen and saw the food served by the catering company, she got very upset. She called the company's office and started to yell at the manager, telling them to fix the disaster immediately. Can you guess what made her so upset? Look at the top of the cake. There are two green goblins instead of the bride and the groom. Kevin and Jill went to the Caribbean for their honeymoon. The hotel looked rather creepy, but they decided to stay there anyway. The hotel employee asked the newlyweds to choose a room from the remaining options. Can you help Kevin and Jill pick a good room? There were weird stains on linen in the first room. There's a spider web on the chandelier in the second room. And the third one looks pretty good. Jill decided to chill in the swimming pool. On her way to the dressing room, she noticed a TV in the hall and heard some breaking news. Someone spotted a zombie in town. The creature probably went downtown, and it could be anywhere. Zombies are not very good at swimming and move very slowly. Jill entered the dressing room and met three people. Can you tell who the zombie is? There's a bandage on this woman's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had cuts or stretches unless they're a zombie. In the hotel room, Kevin found a secret door leading to a tunnel. He walked through the tunnel and found storage full of diamonds. Suddenly, prison bars appeared around Kevin out of nowhere, and a mysterious voice said, You can take all the diamonds and leave safely if you manage to choose the right potion to escape. There were three options. The first potion will make Kevin invisible. The second potion will turn him into a bird. And the third potion will make him super tall. In five minutes, Kevin returned to Jill with a huge bag of diamonds. Which potion did he choose? The second one. He turned into a small bird that flew through the bars.